you never ever think about what you look like structurally. Usually if you go and you get into a car accident, let's say you go to the emergency room, when they take x-rays, their x-rays are strictly to be able to make sure all of your anatomy is there and to make sure nothing is broken. But no one ever takes it a step further to know like, hey, God put this shape here for you to be in. We need to try to search for this structure because this structure tells me you function at an optimal level. And with that, takes so much pressure off of the nervous system for you to be able to even able to have this podcast with me, for you even to be able to talk, for me to even be able to listen. Our nervous system controls every single thing that we do. Hey, family, this is Dr. Candace Kennedy, and you're doing life with Lakeisha on Living Her Truth. Welcome to the Living Her Truth podcast, where we have honest conversations about what it means to live a purpose-driven life. I am your host, Lakeisha Woodard from LakeishaWoodard.com, the place where women receive the tools necessary to feel seen, heard, and supported while pursuing their purpose. And now every week, you'll learn those same tools through candid and transparent conversations. Hey, family. Welcome to another episode I am so excited that you are here, and I don't take it lightly that you decided to hit that play button and spend about an hour of your time with me. So with that being said, I want you to know that I'm 100% invested in your self-awareness journey. So you better believe that every week I'm bringing my A game for providing you the tools necessary to live a more fulfilled, purpose-driven life. And so family, I want to remind you to please take a moment to leave a five-star rating and subscribe on your favorite podcast platform. Because as you may or may not know, I said I'd love to go to touch a million hearts within the first two years, and I can only do it with your help. So please remember to download each episode, share this conversation with at least four people you know, and repost on your favorite social media platform. Also, don't forget to click the join community link that's in the show notes so we can stay connected and continue the conversation. All right, fam. So today we're talking about health. And we are talking about health from a non-traditional perspective. And I say non-traditional because this particular medical professional that we are talking to today, we don't normally think to see this particular doctor on a regular basis or include visits to this particular doctor, um, include visits in our normal healthcare routine. So I am sitting down and speaking to Dr. Candice, who is a chiropractor here in Houston. And she's also my chiropractor and she's Jeremy's chiropractor as well. Now, like you, possibly, I had a lot of misconceptions about when or why we should even visit a chiropractor. And I had no idea really about how they perform their services. But today we're getting re-educated because I need for all of us to look at our health from a holistic perspective. And looking at it from a holistic perspective, like chiropractic, we can actually physically enjoy the life that we are working so hard to manifest, right? We want to have the ability to physically enjoy it, right? Now, before I let you eavesdrop on a conversation, I want to formally introduce Dr. Candace to you. Dr. Candace Kennedy earned her doctorate from Texas Chiropractic College in 2016. After working with a chain chiropractic company for a few years, Dr. Candace and her husband opened their own practice. Shortly after, they created Couple of Chiro platform, which demonstrates many of the reasons they became chiropractors. Dr. Candace and her husband not only want to impact a person's health, but change their lifestyle. They take a conservative approach to healthcare, identifying the underlying cause of pain and dysfunction. She encourages others to understand that there are other options when it comes to our health and our wellness. Dr. Candace has become the voice and advocate for so many that feel that their health has failed. Family, please take a moment to eavesdrop on my conversation with my friend and personal chiropractor, Dr. Candace Kennedy. Dr. Candace, thank you so much for saying yes to having this conversation with me today. Yes, absolutely. I am so happy to be here today. 
I'm excited. I'm excited. Uh, I'm excited that you're here because we're going to have a, uh, I think like a different type of conversation. We're going to educate some, some people because I know I've been, well, I was miseducated, miseducated before I met you. <laughs> now I'm up on game. Now I'm up on yes. game. <laughs> you caught up. <laughs> I'm caught up. And so now we're about to get my community caught up, caught up as well. And so Dr. Candace, I like to just start off every conversation. We're just talking about how I come to know the person that I'm speaking mm -hmm. with. Yeah. And um, so you guys, I first came across Dr. Candace um because she did an interview or a live Instagram um interview with Mia on behind the business, no, beyond the business. Y'all know yeah. Mia because I talk about Mia all the time. Shout out to Mia. She is a great person. <laughs> oh my goodness. She's amazing. We love, we yeah. love Mia over here at the podcast. Uh -huh. And um, so Mia was talking to Dr. talking to Dr. Candace. And so just out of support for Mia, I was watching the live. And like I said, it was just like re-educated because you guys know that the Candace is a chiropractor and so I was listening to her and what caught me is the fact that Mia said that Dr. Candace helped her to get rid of her chronic pain now to my understanding Mia has never been in a car accident or Correct. bus accident or anything like that and she was able to help her get rid of chronic pain so that perked my ears up and so I was like man I have to I'm gonna have to get you know get her on the podcast so I made a mental note to bring her over here on the podcast well in between time meantime in between time I ended up winning a Mother's Day raffle on mm -hmm. Dr. Candace's page where you collaborated with some other um, black female owned businesses to put together this beautiful package for Mother's Day. And I won the grand prize, which included a free adjustment with Dr. Candace. And so I was like, I've never been to the chiropractor before. I'm gonna go ahead and get it, go, you know, I'm gonna go check it out. It's free, why not? And Dr. Candace is so funny. And I think I told you this, the first day we met, um, when I came in for my adjustment, it was so funny because when I told Jerry that I would an adjustment for the chiropractor, he was like, okay, but what they going to do though? Because you haven't been in a car accident. I was like, yep. I don't yep. know. <laughs> like, I don't know, but we, we going to see when we go in there. And so went in there, got adjusted and Dr. Candace just completely re-educated me. I, I want to say changed my life because my whole mind was just blown and so wow. now me and jeremy are now <laughs> are now her faithful clients because now we go <laughs> and get adjusted all the time and i'm pretty sure yep. we'll get into uh you know jeremy and i's uh health journey with dr candace so yes that's how that's how we met Dr. Candace and I. And so now we're about to have this good conversation because Dr. Candace, here on the podcast, I always, and even across social media, I'm always talking about building a support team, a support team that's going to motivate you and encourage you to keep you on track for operating your purpose. And so you and your hubby, Dr. Alton, are on my support team. You guys are part of my support team because this is a part of my health journey, having you guys as my doctors is part of my health journey, which, you know, keeping me healthy, is going to help me to operate in purpose because I can't operate in purpose from a sick bed. You got it. I can't you operate in purpose with a hunchback. I just we can't, we can't do that. <laughs> <laughs> so you guys are, are my support team, but I want to start from the beginning. What made you guys become chiropractors? Because I ain't going to lie, y'all like the first black chiropractors I met. What made y'all become chiropractors? It's, it's so funny because usually when people come into the office, like that's the first thing I hear. Like, I just want to let you know, I'm scared to be here, but I'm here because you look like me. And like, that's cool for me because that, that's a conversation starter. Like, you know, like we, we're here, we're at this place where we're not really sure if we need to be here, but I think I need this for my health, but I need someone who looks like me to be able to under, understand it and be able to explain it to me on terms that, you know, you understand. Mm -hmm. So, um, 
I'm not even going to lie. When we first started out, we did not want to be chiropractors. I actually wanted to be an optometrist. And my husband wanted to be a dosimetrist. We'll get into that later. <laughs> what is that? I haven't even heard of that, but okay. So uh, dosimetry is, they are the people who actually calculate the amount of chemo a cancer patient will receive. So one thing that I just did not understand about that profession is I felt like it could be done by a computer, right? Like do the calculations, administer the drugs, and then that's it. So I'm really glad that... Um, God pushed us out of that season because I really don't feel like either one of us would have been fulfilled in our first journeys that we set out on. Dr. Alton was telling me the other day, he goes, I think you would have been a terrible optometrist. And I'm like, okay, babe. Thanks. Thanks. But he's right though. We have so much fulfillment in what we do. And we literally, when we set out to go down this path of chiropractic, we didn't know what we were in store for. We just knew that, Hey, we wanted to do something different. When we actually um, indulged a little bit more in the profession and just really just told ourselves, hey, we're grounded in this. We want to want this to be something that people actually seek. We started doing so much research and just found out that chiropractic is just something that you need to live your everyday life to be able to function. And when we think about that on terms of our community, we wait until there's something wrong to address it. And so with that, we just wanted to be an avenue for people who understood exactly what true health was, because we find that, like I said, a lot of us think that pill isn't, or health is in a bottle, right? Or health is in a surgery, but it's not that. And we help so many people every day to either remove themselves off of medications or drugs or save them or prevent them from surgery. So we've actually been... Um, really fulfilled in our profession it feels like we are just operating and working in our purpose and like i said we just did not even have a dream to set off to be chiropractors but like god just put us here and we're we're grooving <laughs> i'm i'm so glad you guys are you know are obedient because a lot of us we hear god and then we go in the mm -hmm. opposite direction because we're scared mm -hmm. because mm -hmm. it's different from what everybody else is telling us to do i mean it's 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 challenging to to follow god but you never know who's tied to your purpose exactly exactly <laughs> Had you guys went into a completely different direction, like Jeremy yes. and I would never have received this type of care, you exactly. know, because um, we would have waited until something happened. God forbid we got into a car accident and then they sent us to uh, a chiropractor. Like that's when we would have ended up in a chiropractor's office. But that's why I love you guys because you all about preventative care. You know, it's, it's uh, so funny because you would think, Jeremy and I, you would think, because he's the guy and I'm the woman, you would think that he will be up on the maintenance of his car. And I'm more up on my maintenance than he is. And that's because mm -hmm. I was single for so long. So I was just like, mm -mm, let me get my oil changed done on time let me get my tune-up done on time because the last thing i want to do is get you know stuck on the side of the road and they got to get a tow truck and then all of this exactly and so jeremy you know is, is admired by that because he's just like damn babe you're just always on top of it i'm like just because i'm trying to prevent any issues so yes. when i walked into your office and you talked about how car you know going to chiropractic is preventative care you were speaking my language Cause I've yeah. already kind of sort of in that, in that mindset already. So tell us, um, re-educate us on what chiropractors do and why we should see a chiropractor. So you should not wait until anything's wrong. You shouldn't wait till you fall or you get into a car accident. I think that's a myth that we definitely need to debunk. Um, I know that one, one thing is for sure is that we all have a spine, right? And mm -hmm. throughout life on that spine, that spine can remember any trauma or accidents that you've ever been through in life and your body likes to compensate. So what I do as a chiropractor is we go, we look at the spine, we figure out exactly where the misalignments are. And we help to make sure that we straighten those misalignments. And by doing so, that helps to take pressure off of the nerves that are associated with your spinal cord. Each nerve on your spinal cord goes to something important, whether it's your heart, your lungs, uh, your kidneys, your digestive system. Our nervous system is one of the most important systems that we have because those nerves need to be able to fire properly to make sure that those organs are functioning. 
And with that, what we help to do is we find the misalignments, we help to realign the back, take the pressure off the nerve. And when that happens, your symptoms start to go away. So whether it's your headaches or your long chronic back pain or your digestive problems, there's a lot of things that chiropractic deals with that people just don't even associate with a chiropractor. So um, that's one of the other reasons why we just decided to get into this profession and really indulge and figure out what people need as far as getting back to health. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, you know, I knew none of that before <laughs> I went into her office. Like that first, that first visit, when I went home, you guys have no idea how excited I was when I, when I went home and I was telling Jeremy about it because I'm like, these nerves are connected to our digestive, you know, tracts and all the organs and stuff. And I'm like, man, is that the reason why, you know, I'm having, um, digestive issues because I've taken a, a herbal, uh, plant-based detox, which has helped a whole lot before coming into, you know, coming into your practice, that helped a whole lot. But to see how I can even help my digestion system even further, just by getting my spine in alignment, I was like, okay, I'm all for this. Exactly. And to be honest with you, until you did my first uh, x-ray, I was just like, I didn't even know my spine was that bad. I didn't even know, like you guys, the curve in my neck was completely reversed. Mm -hmm. That's about mm -hmm. the curves, the curves in the spine. Do you even have the skeleton? Do you have the skeleton at your house? I don't. I was just thinking, I was like, I should have brought my skeleton today, but um, that, I mean, I'm so glad that you put, you, you touched on that because it's so important. We don't understand the structure that is supposed to be on the inside of our body. It's kind of like one of those things where it's like out of sight, out of mind. And not only that, we, we go back to the fact of a lot of times when people say, hey, I'm not hurt. I don't need to come to the chiropractor. You never, ever think about what you look like structurally. Usually if you go and you get into a car accident, let's say you go to the emergency room, when they take x-rays, their x-rays are strictly to be able to make sure all of your anatomy is there and to make sure nothing is broken. But no one ever takes it a step further to know like, hey, God put this shape here for you to be in. We need to try to search for this structure because this structure tells me you function at an optimal level. And with that, oh, you're so right. I wish I would have had a spine. With that, it takes so much pressure off of the nervous system for you to be able to even able to have this podcast with me, for you even to be able to talk, for me to even be able to listen. Our nervous system controls every single thing that we do. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Absolutely. You guys, my spine was so bad. Dr. Candace was like, are you in pain? Are you in pain? Are you, are you, are you not in pain? Yeah. Like, that was just how out of alignment I was. So, oh my goodness, it's, it's just crazy. And the one thing, now I, I have to contribute it to coming in and getting adjusted because that's when I, I noticed this particular, um, this particular change. But when I first came in, before I started my program, it's like I had this, this desire to just eat all the time. I just couldn't, mm -hmm. I just couldn't get rid of it. It didn't matter mm -hmm. how much I ate. Uh, I just couldn't get satiated. I just always wanted to eat, just eat, 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 eat. And once I started to get my adjustments and started to get my neck area, you know, straighten out, like that desire to just always eat has completely went away. So I've been able to, you know, regulate my eating even more. Not to say that I'm starving myself because that's not it. How do I even, how do I even, like, I don't even know how to. It was like you were craving. I remember you yes. telling me you were craving different things and you said, especially sugar, like, uh -huh. and that, that hit home for me because we were just talking and having this conversation the other day. I had a patient who made me a cake. And I really encourage her to just use organic sugar. I'm like, hey, just use the organic sugar and you'll be, you know, it'll be great. So she makes me this cake and she brings it back. And she's like, I'm really disappointed in this cake. It's like not my best cake. It tastes terrible. And I have a bite of this cake and I go, this is the best cake you've ever made. And she did not, did not understand. She's like, I only use half of the sugar that I would normally use, but 
your brain, your brain signals those cravings and it makes you want more and it makes you, it tells you that you don't have enough. And so sugar is literally like a drug. They say it's one chemical degree away from being cocaine in the sense that it is so addictive. And with that, it's so funny that you would touch on that after you started getting adjusted, those cravings started going away because in your cervical neck, in your neck, the cervical curve actually looks like a C shape or banana. When that structure is destroyed, it really affects your brainstem. Your brainstem is where your mood, your appetite, and your temperature and control are all regulated. So with that, if you did have pressure on the back of this brainstem right here, there's no wonder that you could be hungry or, you know, moody at times. It all makes sense. Nervous system is such a powerful thing. It is. And I, and I learned that because my, the top of my spine, that's where we did the most work. That's where I needed to have the most work done. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. it, it's like, it, it made, it made sense. So you guys, I mean, you definitely need to go into a chiropractor and just get checked out if you yeah if absolutely you haven't, haven't already. But uh, I don't know if I share this with you, Dr. Candace, but you also saved us a thousand dollars because when I went in, that first time I went in, Jeremy was talking about buying a new mattress because he had this kink in his Whoa. bed. <laughs> <laughs> mattress when, yes. I, when i came when i came home that first night i slept so good because it was the first time that i was able to literally like lay flat not without that little curve in, in the lower yep. back you know that made me want to like lay on my side or whatever like i was able to literally just lay flat on the bed and that was also the first time i had ever like went to sleep and woke up in the same position Mm -hmm. a while <laughs> so for me to go sleep and wake up in the same position and not be like the best sleep of my life and I'm the person who can like fall asleep like that so I don't have a problem with going to sleep but the man the quality of sleep that night was so great I told mm -hmm. Jeremy I said uh you may need to uh go to the chiropractor <laughs> just let him get that look that little kink out <laughs> before we buy this new mattress i'm like dude we ain't had this mattress for five years yet we're not buying and it's it. so funny when you brought him in that's exactly how he described it oh it's just a little kink you know <laughs> nothing serious mm -hmm. nothing serious but yeah you guys was able to to get that kink out and say but it's like a thousand dollars because i wasn't trying to buy no mattress <laughs> <laughs> Another thing that I love about you guys is that you take a holistic approach to, you know, to your practice. So it's not just about um, the spine, you know, it's a holistic approach. So why is that? Why do you guys add a holistic approach to your practice? Well, if you think about it, every time we go to the doctor, so I'll give you a couple examples that I've heard from some of my patients, they'll say, hey, I've been having diabetes for the last 15 years and I know that it's controlled because I have this medication. And then they also say, my doctor just told me that I need to eat right and take this medication and I'll be, I'll be good to go and my, my diabetes will be managed. And we just take it a step further because you, if you think about it, every time you ever go to a doctor and they're like, hey, you just need to lose a little bit of weight and you need to exercise. No one ever goes a step further to actually tell you what that means. Right. Yeah. Um, I've also known that since I've been through practice, it's like you cannot assume anybody knows anything. Like, for example, you need to go eat veggies, but veggies to them could be considered French fries. Right. So you really just have to take people by the hand sometimes and really just guide them into what health actually means. Um, not all the time, not all veggies are created equal, not all fruits are created equal. So we put in this holistic approach so that it's just a guide on how you should just live your everyday life. Nutrition, eating better, eating organic if you can, eating really clean, decreasing your toxins, not having a whole bunch of um, chemicals around you and in your life making sure you are in the right mindset. A lot of the times people don't even put mindset into health. And that is one of the biggest factors in becoming healthy or staying healthy is that mindset. Um, of course, we, we live and preach by chiropractic, but we also just want to make sure that you're out and exercising and getting oxygen. So all of those things together collectively help your body heal and function at its 
optimal capacity, right? So we really make sure that we are incorporating all of those things into our care. So whether it's supplementation by way of herbs or uh, protein powders, whatever it is, we're there to help. We even used to have sessions pre-COVID, of course, when um, we used to, it used to be called Shop Like a Doc. And we literally, we have groups of like 20 come to the grocery store with us. And I would go aisle by aisle telling you, get this, don't get this. This has hidden sugar. This has hidden salt. And it really just, it kind of humbled me a little bit because I just realized that people don't know how to read food labels. And because of that, there's a lot of marketing tactics that will trick us into believing that something is considered healthy and it's not because they decided to use a different word that wasn't flat out sugar. So with that, we just take a whole approach to your body. We're not, if you come in for an arm, we're going to obviously look at your arm, but we know that that arm is attached to a body <laughs> and that body is so important. We have to check everything to make sure that you're aligned and functioning. Wow. You guys go over and beyond. Like, <laughs> yeah. I had um, Dr. Bobby Price, who is a um, plant-based nutritionist. He used to be a pharmacist, but then he, now he's a plant-based nutritionist. So he, um, he educates people on food. His thing is food is medicine. And he said Thank that, you. Yeah, he said that going to, you know, school, they don't teach you about nutrition. So if they don't even teach you about nutrition, like what made you guys add that to your practice? Like to go the extra step to, you know, pre-COVID, of course, but to add the extra step to like take people to the grocery stores to teach them how to read labels. Who would have thought it? Your chiropractor. Is that normal practice for all chiropractors? That's just something y'all, especially y'all do. <laughs> We are all not created equal. I'm just going to leave it at that. <laughs> um, Dr. Alton and I, we're a group of, uh, we're in a group of network of chiropractors. It's called Max Living. And we have been with Max Living ever since we were students. And one of the things that really just keyed us in on them was the fact that they did take the whole body approach. Um, in chiropractic school, we would learn how to stretch everything, um, roll out everything, and all of that stuff is great. We still know how to do all of that stuff, but it's like, what about that everyday person who is not an athlete, right? What do they get? And so a lot of the times we just found that it, they had poor nutrition. So we just started there. And even with just supplementing their nutrition, we start to see leaps and bounds in their health. We had a guy the other day tell me, he went to his med medical doctor and he was able to remove himself off his high blood pressure medication simply off of getting adjusted and just taking the small little lifestyle changes that we recommended. Mm -hmm. I mean, it makes sense because our body has all these limbs. We have all these organs, you know, these nerves, you know, veins that literally work together. So like you said, I know you want to come in for an arm, but your arm is attached to your whole body. So it makes mm -hmm. sense that you will look at the whole body, because if you are adjusting um, a person and, you know, you're fixing the, the transmitter, if you will, from the brain down to the nerves, this particular organ. So now that the brain is telling the body what it needs to, you know, what it's supposed to be telling it, it makes sense that you would teach the person how to respond, how to take action. Now they're getting the message because just because they get the message, like you said, that doesn't mean they actually know. People exactly. just don't know. Like people don't know how to read labels. They don't. They just and it's not, it's not, a, it's not their fault. Like we just weren't taught. If you think about it, it's just like, who would have ever taken the time to teach you how to read the label or even how to break it down for your body type or for your health goals. So. Yeah. Yeah. And you guys also do uh, webinars and stuff too, like meetings and yep. like that. Yeah, we do webinars, we do classes. We had a diabetes class not too long ago. We had one talking about cancer. We talk about the immune system, whatever we feel really needs to be heightened in the community. That's what we'll focus on. Um, I know when COVID first hit, we were really strict on the immune system and how to be able to fight off different things um, that your body may come in contact with. And the class was actually packed because people wanted to know like, hey, is my immune system gonna be compromised? What should I do um, from a more holistic approach to stay healthy during this season? 
You guys, once again, Dr. Candace is a chiropractor. Has your primary <laughs> care physician did this? No, I'm not trying to throw no shade. <laughs> I'm not trying to no throw shade. No shade. <laughs> <laughs> But if you it's the Houston area, I'm gonna need you <laughs> to, you know, look up Dr. Candace because that is that's amazing because we get so much, you know, conflicting information on the news when it comes to COVID. So if you have a doctor, a chiropractor, or a primary physician who's willing to sit down and have that conversation with you, why not? Absolutely. Why not have that conversation? So Dr. Candace, what's the number one thing we can do right now? to improve our spinal alignment before even booking an appointment with you? I like that question because I'm like, you just need to get adjustment. Like there's no first step. <laughs> but if I take it back, there's always something that you can do. Um, I think about when people ask me that question, I also think about my younger patients. They're like, well, what can I do? Or what did I do to get my spine like this? And I always say it starts with your devices. I think we don't really think about how dependent we are on our computers and our tablets and our phones that it really creates a um, misalignment in our neck and a decreased curve, which causes all these types of problems down the road. They recently did a study on millennials, um, who, people who use cell phones and devices. Uh, I think they did it for about like five to 10 hours out of the day. Mm. And they, they, they're starting to see that people in this age group have this curve or hump in their back right here. Mm. And with that, there's coming all these problems. Like they're starting to have heart palpitations, asthma, um, uh, anxiety was one of those things on there. Reason being is because you have to think about it. How often are we like this throughout the day, just looking down? So my very first just tip to be able to, what can you do is just to really make sure that when you're on your device, we're not here, but we're here. It really helps to preserve the curve in your neck mm -hmm. and it helps you to maintain your good posture. It just really prompts you to be able to sit up versus to slouch all the time. And with COVID in place and we're in this new season of where people are having to work at home a lot more, we are at makeshift desks. We're not at our normal desk <laughs> that we would be at. We're at the dining room table or we're on the couch. And we're putting in multiple hours in these positions and poor posture and it's really starting to break down and degenerate our spine. So I really just encourage you, if you're having to sit at a desk for long periods of time, encourage yourself to get up. It is okay to take a break. I find these people who they just want to feel like they want to work through the whole entire day. And it's re it really doesn't do your body any good to do that. They say that sitting is the new smoking. So really encourage yourself to get up. If you <laughs> need to take a break, have a glass of water or a bottle of water right there at your desk, encourage yourself to drink. Then you'll have to use the bathroom and you have to get up. So really just do different things that you can make yourself get up, stretch out a little bit, and then go back into your computer position. Yo, let me tell you, first off, sitting in some new smoking, that's crazy. But let me tell you, the first time Dr. Alton adjusted me, he was <laughs> so what I need you to do is, I'm gonna need you to get up every hour from the computer and go walk. I said, huh, come up, what, come yes. in? He was like, yes. every hour, I need you to get up and walk what you cannot are you serious like for real for real to get up every hour he was like yes every hour so I'm like oh my god and I and I and I'm not gonna say that I'm perfect because because I don't do it all the time but I did um create a timer on my phone so I can hey. calm myself to you know get up and just go walk, do some jumping jacks. Cause he's like, you can even just do like 25 jumping jacks. So you guys, we Jeremy and I, we went through a whole program to get realignment. So I have one of the contraptions like on my door. So I just get up and I just go and, you know do some of the chiropractic exercises because just the exercises that, you know that you gave through the program it really feels good. Just this motion right here. Oh. Yeah. Goodness, that motion right there just releases like the, the the tension it just makes me feel better so right yeah yeah I think it's really cool because um I had started implementing people to 
set timers so that they could get up. And then I started realizing that these big companies, these oil and gas companies like Shell and Exxon, they actually have it to where their employees, they have their computers in front of them. They'll sit there for hours at a time. Their computer will log out and make them take a break (laughs) every hour. Yep. I love that. Me too. I love that. You know, I've, I've heard of companies um, buying their employees, the desk that go up and down. Yeah, the standing desk. Yep, standing desk. Yeah, yeah. You know, just today, something is funky is going on with my uh, computer cord, with my laptop. So it really only charges well at the kitchen, at the kitchen counter. And my hmm. laptop will go dead at the right wrong time. I'm like, oh, I just need to, we're really going to go dead on me? Yep. So yep. I um so I would have to like plug it in at the counter, which is away from my desk. And one day I just found myself standing at the counter doing my work. And I was just like, wait a minute, hold on. Yep. This is actually kind of this is actually kind of working. Dr. Elsie would be so proud of me. Thing, yes. <laughs> mm-hmm. I like it. Dr. Elsie would be so proud of me over here standing up while I'm doing some mm-hmm. work. Cause this, it, it can be hard sometimes. It can be hard. Sometimes. You remember that first, those first two weeks of care, I was like, have Jeremy send me a picture of your workstation. You remember that? <laughs> I don't play. I'll take it. <laughs> 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 yeah. Like, oh, <laughs> yeah, so I'm trying to be real posture. Like right now, while we, while we talk, I'm trying to sit up straight. But this is my, this is my doctor. I'm talking to you guys. I'm trying to. Mm. Not like she she didn't she didn't learn me some stuff. I'm trying to sit here, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. <laughs> so, Dr. Candace, did you have any challenges starting your practice um, due to people being misinformed about um, about the practice in itself? You know, I think everything comes with its own challenges, right? Um, I actually didn't start off in a practice. We actually both worked for a corporate chiropractic chain, mm-hmm. and when working, when we worked there, we just found that it was just something missing. Like we were not fulfilled. We just felt like we were just adjusting all day, every day. And so when we did take the leap to open up our own uh, practice Mm -hmm. there, you know, there are your, your, your typical ups and downs of not having your client base when you open up. It's not one of those things that like it, it, when they build it, they'll come type issue. You really have to get your word out there. You have to let people know, that chiropractic is safe and that it will help them. And so I believe that that transitional part in the beginning of really just helping us be able to grow, that was probably the most challenging. And once we got over that, it was really just easy to explain, you know, why we do what we do, because that is self-explanatory once you get the treatment. But it's just the fact of getting that person through the door, making sure that they trust you or debunking a lot of the issues that they've always heard. Well, I heard chiropractors aren't real doctors or I heard this. So I felt like in the beginning, I was really having to beg people, please come see me. Like, I promise, I promise, I promise. But um, as I have grown, I I know that I don't need to do that because literally, like I said, the work speaks for itself when you start to relieve yourself of those symptoms or you do happen to get better. you're, You're relieved of that chronic back pain that you have for over 20 years off of just three weeks of adjustments. So um, I think that the most challenging part was just Mm -hmm. figuring out how to educate um, a certain demographic of people to get into the office, so. Yeah, yeah, because you guys, um, I know that the kids talked about uh, chronic pain, but again, I didn't have any chronic pain and I was still able to find a benefit, you know, from getting, you know, getting adjustment, getting adjusted. And then even after we finished our, our program, you know, Jeremy asked me, he was like, so are you going to continue with the care? I said, uh, yeah, because I don't want those cravings to come back. So yes, I think I'm going to continue, you know, continue with it. So, you know, so we do. So we go in, you know, a couple of times uh, a month to, to make sure that our adjustments stay adjusted. I don't know the problem. Yes. You're, you're maintaining your curvature and your spine and your structure. Yeah. And then that's a good point too, because you never, 
I think a lot of the times people are like, oh, I have to wait until I get hurt. But we always use the analogy. You never want to wait until you feel something to go in, because at that point, it's probably too late. Right. Like you didn't feel a heart attack coming on the day before. Like that's something that just happened. So there's always those things that you want to make sure that you're taking in consideration of maintaining your body. We put our body through so much stress and trauma throughout the day that we don't even realize it. Um, Like, for an example, sitting all day tears your body and your spine up. But when we do it for 20 years out of our life, you know, five times a week, it it becomes a new normal for us. And that shoulder pain that you've been dealing with because you're at the desk sitting for long periods of time becomes something that you will address later on. And then later on never comes. And then before you know it, your shoulder is locked in place. You know, we see it all the time. And I think it's also about making sure that you take the time to address issues that are going on with you as well. Mm -hmm. you know what when you brought up the shoulder as an example it made me think about my mom because my mom is one of those you know ladies who got like that super heavy purse like she used to wear those you know that (laughs) purse and it has everything in there everything everything. she would you know take her bills everything I'm like dang mom because her you know her shoulder would be like this and she had like that indent right there because the purse was so you know was so heavy that could that could be affecting her just everything, like think everyday items, purse, your bra strap, right? Carrying your kids around, all of those things, doing those things on a daily basis, slowly but surely move and mold your spine into a position that was not there before. Mm-hmm. So we have to take all that into consideration. Mm-hmm. Now you brought up myths. Let's dispel some of the myths about, you know, chiropractors and the first one I want us to to address is that chiropractors are going to break your back because that was the first thing that you reassured me (laughs) in my first my in my first adjustment you gave me a specific example with the Mack truck so talk talk to us about that myth about chiropractors will, will break your will break your neck I think it's it's so funny because it's like, it's not a matter of like when I'm going to hear it, it's more like how many times am I going to hear it throughout a day, especially when there's a lot of these patients involved. Like, I don't want you to break my neck, but I can't. Like, I physically cannot break your neck. I cannot generate enough force in my little hands and my wrists to break anything in your body. Um, I think that's one of the things too. Um, when you think about it, think about how chiropractors are displayed on the media or even in cartoons, right? Like when you see a chiropractor, it, you do hear this crazy sound and you do see the person's face and that automatically puts you into a position where you're like, I don't want that. I don't know what that is. I don't know why that happened. I know I don't need that. And that's just simply not true. I always take the time to make sure that I'm very thorough with my new patients and clients just because it is something that they're not familiar with and they're not sure why it's happening. I cannot break your back. The actual sound, the popping and the clicking that you hear is just the removal of air and gas from the joints. Your, your, your joints build up gas in between the sockets and it's the same thing as if you were to let air and gas out of a champagne bottle. It's the same type of pop. But I think that when it comes along with the physical force and the actual sound, people get very, very turned off with it, but it's completely safe and very effective. Mm -hmm. Completely safe. And (laughs) (laughs) believe me, guys, it's it's completely safe. It's, um, it's the unknowing that's scary because once I had the first adjustment, I was good. I I was good. And I was adjusted by, um, Dr. Candice first and Mm -hmm. then the next time I went in I was adjusted by by her husband so she broke everything down for me she told me that when she you know adjusted my neck it was gonna sound louder because you know closer to my ears so it's gonna sound louder than um what it really is so I was like okay so I went through it I didn't die because I'm still here I didn't die and then I'm still in practice (laughs) (laughs) and you still in practice Okay. And, um, <laughs> when I go and get adjusted by Dr. Elton, you know, I ain't gonna lie, there was a little bit of fury there because he's a man. So I figured he was going to be, you know, a lot harder, maybe a little bit more forceful, you know, just a little bit or whatever. I was like, is that, is that it? Did you finish? Like, that's it. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> he's, so, <laughs> he's so gentle. And yeah. I'm like, is that it? He was like, Oh, he's like, yeah, my, 
my 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 wife, she you know she she's a little heavy headed than me. She was like he was like everybody has that reaction. Everybody thinks that when they come to me, they're gonna be worse. But it was like yep. Nah. Yep. <laughs> that's the worst he can get was with Dr. Candace, then I'm then I'm good then. Yep. Yep. <laughs> what are some other uh myths about chiropractic? About the- um, let's see. One we hear all the time is that once you go to a chiropractor, you have to go for the rest of your life. Um, I think that with that one is it, very misunderstood because I feel like people have this notion of health that it will be over. I will take this and then this is done with. And if you think about it, if you're going to keep living, you obviously have to maintain your life. If you were to get an adjustment and you sat still for 30 years afterwards, then no, you would never need chiropractic ever again. And you, and, and in that situation, you would still need chiropractic because you would be stiff. Um, a body is meant to be in motion. And like I said, a lot of the things that we do throughout life simply throws our body off and we need to be adjusted. Um, I think that people get into the mindset that they would have to come three times a week for the rest of their life. And that's simply not true. Once you maintain your structure and your curvature that your that your body needs to achieve, you are able to maintain those curves. You may not have to come to the chiropractor three times a week for the rest of your life. You might only have to come one or two times out of the month. It depends on your body and what you do on an everyday basis. If you're going to ride dirt bikes, you probably need more adjustments, right? Versus someone who is just sitting at a desk for long periods of time and they're helping to maintain their curves properly. So every situation is different. We go on a case by case basis, but in the reality of it is you definitely should seek adjustments throughout your life it just does not have to be on a heavy regimen yeah once you've you gone through your 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 little care plan it's correct uh, care. correct, correct. yeah because jeremy and i we started our our plan at the same time but i i finished before him because yep. our exercises and stuff were you know were different and he just needed you know just a few extra sessions sessions than i did so so yeah so everybody everybody is, is, is different, but, um, he received great results. I received great results. We absolutely, we absolutely love it. So, but Dr. Candace, have you heard that you're amazing yet today? Oh, thank you. You're the first one. You're the first one. Tell him I beat, tell him I beat him to it. <laughs> <laughs> I sure will. <laughs> Before I let you go, please give us an Audible recommendation because I'm addicted to Audible, but if it's not, yeah, give us an Audible recommendation of a book that you listen to that has inspired you in some way. So uh, my book, this is the one I read every year. Yes. It's like, you can't even, you can't even like get around it. Right. Um, And every time I read it, I'm like, oh, this is so simple. But every time I read it, I grab something different from it, right? Um, And the the last time I read it, it was the be impeccable with your words. I love that. Mm -hmm. Because we don't understand like how much strength our words actually have. And for me to actually be able to grasp that this year and understand that I have so much power to be able to spread health, right? Just through my words. So with that, I think that that book is very important because it, 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 it gives you keys to life and four steps, right? And the other one is don't take things personal. <laughs> I think that once I actually um, understood that, business was better because I always used to be the person that would put a lot of on me. I feel like everything... If, 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 if something went wrong, it was my fault, right? And I'm learning, I can't take things personal. And when I let that off of my mind, there's so much space to be able to grow, right? And to be able to use your words. So this is my go-to every time. Oh, yeah. And- Oh yeah. The four agreements have been talked about here on the podcast. So it's already in the show notes, you guys, um, definitely check it out. And you know, you're right. Every time you listen to the book or read the book, you get something totally different. Now, the first time I listened to it several years ago, I thought it was a great book, but this last time, because Mia just did a book club discussion on it, uh, over a few months ago, she did a she did a book club on it. And when I listened to it that second time around, completely different. Cause I'm in a new season. 
um, in my life, that whole, you know, don't take things personal that like freed me to, you know, weight off my shoulders because like you take everything personal. Like, why you don't like me? Like, what did I do to cause you not to like me? Girl, Keisha, that ain't got nothing to do with you. Nothing. <laughs> <laughs> Go about your business. They ain't okay. got <laughs> so that right there set me free for sure. Mm -hmm. So last question. When describing the meaning of living your truth, complete this phrase. I'm going to give you two words and you tell me what your third word is, okay? Self-awareness, purpose, and... Ooh. Gratitude. Man, I feel like we we can't get anywhere without it. Um, and that's another thing that I really have to focus on this year in specific, because there's so many negative things to focus on, but we never really take the time to acknowledge things that are just around us or acknowledge the moment. Um, I was listening to a video this morning on YouTube, and it was talking about how most people, they get up and they react to Monday, right? Like, oh, it's Monday, this, that, I got this to do, I got that to do. But instead, it's never like, hey, I get to see Monday, I get to go to work, right? I get to affect people, I get to help people every day. And it's just that mindset of being just thankful and remembering where you came from and all of your past experiences are leading up into this one yeah. so that you can, one, remember what he has done for you, right? <laughs> and two, it just makes you depend on him even more because you wouldn't have got here without him mm -hmm. and you got so much further to go with him. So gratitude is always going to be on top for me. Yeah, I love that. You know, I think I'm probably the only person who loves Mondays. Mondays. <laughs> <laughs> I do too, because my Tuesday schedule is beautiful. So. <laughs> yes. <laughs> but that also took a mindset shift too for me to get to a point where I love Mondays. Because Monday, Absolutely. it's like if I can get up and do my routine on Monday, whether that's working out, spiritual studies and, and eating right, prepping and all that, it like literally sets the tone for my week. For the week, right? Yeah. Yes, for the week. So the first time I experienced that, I was like, oh, I love Mondays. Mondays is going to be my day where I reset, restart, and do everything according to my schedule the best that I can so the rest of my week can be great. So yep, that's, that's so true. I like that you said that because Alton and I do this thing called war planning. Every Sunday we sit down, we merge schedules, we figure out what our goals for, whether it's, we do one for the month too, like a grand goal for the month, yeah. but then every week we have to figure out how we're going to break down that month's goals. And it really helps you to stay on task. Um, it, it does help you to practice gratitude because you have a set time to be able to be free and to very communicate, meditate, whatever you need to do. And like you said, it sets a tone for the week. So I've Yes, do it. <laughs> yeah, I agree. I agree. But this was amazing. <laughs> this is amazing. So hopefully you get, you know, some, some more clients. I'm yes. gonna <laughs> come see every bit that we were like, dang, when our time. Sometimes we were like, dang, all these people, they ain't coming for dang, they coming over here. They got the they got the white card. They're like, dang, we've been looking at people. <laughs> <laughs> But hey, it's all, it's all good. We'll sit there and wait. We'll sit there and wait. <laughs> yes, I love it. I love you guys. <laughs> now that you've been re-educated on chiropractors and some of the common myths about chiropractic have been, you know, busted, you can now fully assess your health from a different perspective. Who knows? Maybe a spinal readjustment can cure a problem that you're having. I don't know. I'm not sure. I'm not a doctor, so please don't quote me on that. But at least you have an awareness of another option to explore before taking another medication. You have an awareness of another option to explore before you go under the knife. That's all I'm saying. You have options, so it's okay to explore those options. Let me remind you that Everything that we have talked about during the Strategize Your Vision series impacts your strategy. Like everything impacts your strategy. And I know I have said this over and over again, and some of you are probably still wondering why having a strategy in place to manifest a life that you want to live is important. 
Well, next week, we're going to talk more about why we need a strategy in the first place when it comes to building the life that we want. All right. So make sure to please come back next week for that conversation. Well, family, thank you so much for taking the time to listen to my podcast every single week. If you need help creating a strategy needed to manifest the life that you desire and deserve, then head on over to strategizeyourvision.com to enroll in class today because the doors are officially open. Also know that all rec- Audible recommendations given on any episode are linked in the show notes and you can try Audible for free. Please remember to leave a five-star rating and subscribe on your favorite podcast platform. Also, don't forget to click the join community link that's in the show notes so we can stay connected and continue the conversation. Family, as you know, I've set a lot to go to touch one million hearts within the first two years of the podcast, and I can only do it with your help. So please remember to download each episode, share this conversation with at least four people you know, and repost on your favorite social media platform. Well, family, I appreciate you. My heart is filled with so much gratitude. And until next time, always remember that you are enough and your truth is beautiful.